right. Uh, good evening. I would like to call the meeting to order. Uh, let's start with the roll call. Yay. Commissioners present. This is Don Griffin. Nick Kappas. Oh, Eric Sandwes. Uh, David Walter. David Walters. Okay. Uh, uh, staff present. Uh, Christina Finley, hand department. Okay. Alex Frelly, treasure. Alex Frelly, Department of Economic Sustainable Development. Okay. Larry Allen Legal. And Jeffrey, that was you, right? We heard you too, kind of, right? Yes. Okay. Underwood's here. All right. Um, let's go with the reading of the minutes. Is there a motion to approve the minutes for July the 6th, 2020? I'll make a motion. We accept the minutes for July 2020. This is David Walter. McCappa seconds. If we may have discussion before the vote. Sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, simply to ask um, the portion of our meeting that was the review of the architectural plans. Does that uh, come under the uh, the uh, the purview of the minutes, or is that actually legally a separate meeting or not a meeting at all? It was a separate meeting. It'll need to have its own minutes. So we'll have to draft for approval next time, uh, separate meetings for that particular meeting. Okay, on the, on the uh, supposition that I'd like to see those minutes, uh, I also approve the motion now on the table. Okay, all in favor? You wanna go, you guys wanna try uh, alphabetical order again? I think that works. Right. Who's first then? Mark Griffin. Let's see. That I mean, huh? Is, Gr is Griffin actually first? It is, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's you, oh. me. Okay. All right. Well, that's easy for me. All right. Let's do it. Uh, I I'm in favor. Nick Kappas. Uh, yes. Eric Sandweiss, hi. David Walter, yes. Okay. Uh, no, none opposed, so the motion carries. Examination of claims, is there a motion to approve the claims registers for July 10th, 2020? So moved, this is Eric Sandwes. David Walter will second. All in favor? Uh, I, Don Griffin, yes. Nick Kappas, yes. Sandwes, yes. David Walter, yes. None opposed, the motion carries. Examination of payroll registers. Is there a motion to approve the payroll registers for July the 7th, 2020? David Walter makes a motion to accept the payroll registers. Nick Kappas seconds. All in favor, I, Don Griffin, yes. Nick Kappas, yes. And Royce, yes. David Walter, yes. None opposed, the motion carries. Uh, next, we'll have report of officers and committees. Is there a director's report? No director today, right? So no director report. Is there a legal report? No legal report, uh, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay. Anybody have any questions for legal? No. Is there a treasurer's report? Same as legal, no report. Happy to answer questions. Okay. Is there a CTP update report? Uh, I'm going to, in the interest of the agenda, which is a little bit more robust, I'll I'll defer this this time. Say say that you kind of messed up. You kind of faded in at, at the end there. Sorry about that. It's my computer. Uh, it, the the agenda is pretty long, and there are a lot of things to cover, so I'll skip this week. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you, everybody, for your reports. Uh, let's go to new business. The next item of business is resolution 20 39 approval of Fourth Street or Fourth uh, Guaranteed. Hold on. Uh, approval of Fourth Guaranteed Maximum Price for the Fourth Street Garage. There we go. There we go. I'll jump in, Jeff Underwood, controller. Uh, this is the uh, fourth and last 
uh, GMP for uh, the Fourth Street Garage. Uh, as you know, we did a couple uh, that was our initial start and then things uh, changed on us. Uh, GMP3 was our restart, which was the drill piers and some other things. And then GMP4 is the last and final uh, contract um, with Wilhelm as our um, general contractor and uh, partner on this. Um, the amount of GMP4 uh, that you're actually approving is 13 million. 108729. Uh, and if you go down past the AIA, uh, there's actually a summary of each of the GMPs uh, that have been approved and what we're asking you to prove. And then I asked them to put this exhibit together so that you see the all in cost uh, for Wilhelm to construct the fourth street garage will be 17,379,978. Um, there are some a few value engineering uh, items that we're continuing to look at that it will actually reduce the amount, uh, but not significantly. So we wanted to get this before you and get it approved so uh, they can get under contract with all the um, subcontractors as well. This is also inclusive of all of the alternates. The uh, major ones that this includes that you all care about is the sixth floor and that was a full floor. Um, you know, there's, a, there's kind of a half floor on top. Uh, included uh, the uh, build out on the commercial space to what we call white box from a, a, from a black box. So basically it takes it to a, a finished level that makes it easier for us to uh, attract, especially local companies for because most of the major work is done. So essentially contract, uh, concrete's poured, devising walls are put up and all of the uh, HVAC runs and sewer runs, all those things are stubbed out so that they can connect to those. And then uh, the other major one was the build out of the uh, parking garage offices, which will be the main hub uh, for parking services uh, that will be located now in the 4th Street um, garage. So we were very happy with the pricing. We're very uh, happy with the overall price. Uh, this puts us uh, uh, right on budget. Uh, we believe that uh, this also includes contingency fees uh, so that the, the, the um, end price may actually come down from this. So this is kind of the guaranteed maximum price uh, that we'll see. Uh, so with that, I'll be happy to answer uh, any questions. Larry is involved as well. And Alex uh, is on the call as well. Don, we can ask questions now. Are you good with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. Uh, yeah. Let me let me say let me go to the public and and offer a, a, a chance for the public to so that sure. we can have as much time as we want. Uh, uh, with the public, uh, does does anyone from the public have any interest in uh, speaking in regards to resolution twenty thirty nine? Nope. Okay. Yeah. Let's. Uh, 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 Let's open it up to commissioners. So, uh, Jeff, my question then is um, <laughs> taking a look at, from my understanding, when I read through this over the weekend, I uh, was looking at the specifically page 16 of 122, which has the GMPs laid out. And can you kind of explain to me the uh, reasoning. So GMP one looks like it was a demolition. GMP two is the peers, but then peers GMP three and four, kind of all the other things. So it was like establishing the foundation, and then GMP four is all the other work. Is that what I'm reading here? Yeah, GMP one was the demolition. GMP two was the start of the of the drilled peers, uh, and then GMP three would have been the construction. <clears throat> Obviously, we had to stop. Uh, two and three uh, because of the uh, litigation and how that ended up. Uh, and so, um, uh, excuse me, GMP2. Uh, GMP3 then was the um, drilled piers for the new layout and we got credits from two. So that's why it's so small. And then okay. GMP3, uh, four is the con actual construction. So it's the elevators, uh, the elevators it's all the concrete, 
it's um, the art, not the artwork, but the artworks included in our own. So the commercial just, space. Yeah. 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 So the FAW. So it, it, it's the big construction. Yeah. So then the FAW is our the budget. And then you're saying we're coming in underneath it. Have, yeah. My question is, have we um, had a situation where we say, here's our guaranteed maximum price, and then uh, the, we get a number five? We get something additional. Has that ever happened? Uh, well, this is the... <laughs> The, the, the trades district and and fourth street are the first uh guaranteed projects that we've done uh okay. the only and we build a contingency into these it's about five hundred thousand dollars that allows for unforeseen conditions that both wilhelm and we would have to agree to and allow them to use that money because that's really while it's built into the contract it's the owner's money uh it would have to be something un completely unknown that was outside of the scope of work for us to have a change order to GMP4. So it would be issued as a, as a change order. Uh, but really, once you approve this, the risk of the project transfers to Wilhelm. So as long as it's known conditions and it's not an error by the designers or something that just absolutely was not known comes up. So if there's increases in the materials, if there's anything like that, then they bear those costs and, and uh, we're guaranteed a price. Okay. If I may. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Eric Sanwise. Jeff, uh, just a, a couple of things, both for, for my rudimentary understanding and just for the record. The first is, uh, if you could just explain simply again, the, the difference between the 13.1 the uh, GMP and the 17.3, what, what that difference is. And then second is just overall to account for the how, how do we explain to our, our neighbors and to the public that the overall difference between what we're going to be paying out versus what we expected? Is it really about the construction delays? Is it about the changed footprint? Is it a combination of many things? It's, uh, uh, so if you look at the summary that's right below, if you go through all the AI documents, they didn't have a page number on it that I could find. Uh, what I asked them to do is you're actually, uh, voting on GMP4, which is the 13 million 108. I asked them to put a summary that shows what's the cumulative or what we call the all in price that you will have approved if you approve GMP4 tonight. And that's the 17 million. So it's basically just the sum of the four GMPs. So you would know in total what, what, what have you approved. Um, and and uh, primarily it's the change in the footprint. Uh, obviously, there were additional costs to redesign it. Uh, there's some additional cost, you know, there's some delays. So, you know, some of the pricing went up, but other pricing went down. So, um, other than the actual concrete, we had at least two bidders on each of the packages uh, that was put out by Wilhelm. So, we thought we got very good competitive pricing on it, as well as um, uh, some very good value engineering uh, items coming back from the actual low bidders themselves that said, I know this was specified, but if you, what if you consider that? And we've run those through our um, designer uh, engineering firm and they'll either up or down, or if it was a change in. Uh, so as an example, uh, the, the design that we presented on 4th Street had three different brick um, colors well, they, they valued into the, that, that contractor come back and said, well, if you go down to one, we can save you $17,000. If you go down to two, we can save you $7,000. But at the end of the day, we didn't accept that one because the three brick is what was presented to you all and was what was presented to the plan commission. So we forego that savings. Um, so it's been a very thorough examination of, of the pricing and the costs, but we wanted to give you at the end of the day, it's 17 million total is what you're approving for the construction. This is just $13 million in addition to the other three. Okay. How much were we going to pay? I guess we're saving a million dollars. We're not saving a million dollars. I guess it's a million dollars that 
our land cost is a million dollars less, right? Uh, we had about eight hundred thousand dollars in for uh, sorry, eight hundred thousand dollars in for uh, property acquisition, and that, that was included in the soft costs. Uh, we'll end up down two hundred thousand dollars for you know all the expenses related to that. Uh, so our overall budget was um, nineteen million dollars, and when you take the seventeen million dollars and the adjusted uh, soft costs, we're coming in slightly under the nineteen budget. So right now. 19 million, so we're slightly under budget uh, today. If you the 13 million dollars with the other, because we had utility relocation costs, uh, the, the design costs, uh, the working equipment that has to be purchased, uh, the artwork, uh, which is uh, we're getting under contract. So the total the total overall budget was 19 million dollars, and I think we're at 89 right now. So we're just slightly under, but we, we're hoping that we'll save some money. With, we'll, we know we've got some more VE, uh, but it's not a lot. And then the, the contingency, we're hoping not to use all of that. Do, do we absorb the legal cost of acquire, trying yes. to acquire that other building? Yes. Jeez. Okay. Wait. Down, are you saying that the legal costs for the other building is coming out of our our budget or our money? It's coming out of the overall budget for the project. Over, overall budget. Yeah. For, yeah. Okay. yeah, that's what I was saying. We the overall budget's 19 million. So the yeah. difference between the 17 and the 19 is what we call the soft costs. Right. And part of the soft cost was land acquisition and personal services related to that. So it, it, it's going to go down from eight hundred thousand dollars to uh, around a hundred thousand once we pay everything, both our council and their council. Okay. Any other questions? From any uh, questions or concerns from any? Uh, Commissioners? No. I guess I guess um, I just need a little bit of. Uh, I understand what we're the thirteen million. That's what we're voting on. Thirteen mil one one away, right? So, I guess how much in total? I, I'm just trying to make sense of how much you know overall we're going to be voting on from an RDC standpoint. I guess that's where I'm trying to like wrap my, my brain around. For for the for the total construction. Yeah. That's the seven three seventy nine nine seventy eight. That's okay, the so all that's, in that's that's been all of us. Yeah. That's okay. all of us. Okay. Sorry. And then I, the I, I'm like coming on the back end of all this. So I, I Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it, it gets a little complicated because it, you know, we kind of had fits and starts. And then um, it, just as a reminder, uh, on 4th Street, we bonded for all of it. There were two bond issues, a taxable and a non-taxable, but the mm -hmm. total overall monies available was $19 million. And so we'll pay $17,380 for construction and then uh, we'll go towards the soft cost, which is land acquisition, uh, the, the design, the art, parking equipment that's uh, purchased separately, um, and so, so kind of those uh, ancillary costs that we will uh, have as a part of it. So what I'm saying, our all-in cost is going to right now is just below the $19 million. So we're, let's just say we're on budget. Yeah. So, and then you said we have about 500000 built in for anything that, say, happens. Right, and that's inclusive in this. In, that's inclusive in this cost. I mean, even though I mean, it's five hundred thousand of the whole cost. It, it's like it's under five percent. That's for sure. But you know, um, okay. I appreciate your patience, Jeff. On that, no problem. Um, it's a big project. It's a lot of money. That's that's my biggest thing. It's a lot of money. You know. Um, 
I know that, uh, you know, getting all the history from not only the project, but also the dish, the tip districts and, um, what, you know, how, how it was originally set up for the four street garage with, you know, uh, cook and all of that. So just, just really interesting to be able to take it all in and yeah, it's a lot of money. <laughs> The good news is, I mean, given that we're in an unprecedented time and with the delay, uh, you know, extremely happy that we were able to come in under budget. I was, I was very worried with delays and the, the impacts of COVID-19 because we were getting notifications on trade districts from a lot of the uh, uh, suppliers that said, hey, you know, we've got two plants and, and one of them is shut down. So our production's cut in half and, you know, you start talking those kind of delays, but so far, so good. And like I said, we got really good bids uh, this time around. So the fact that we could come in, uh, not a whole lot, but somewhat under budget was given, you know, how far back we've sold bonds. Uh, I'm very, very, very happy with the pricing. Uh, uh, one other thing, and we'll get you the information is we will have construction contracts or uh, cameras at both sites. The fourth street is connected right now. It's running out of the Waldron. Um, trades district. We've got both of the cameras bought. Uh, we've just got to get power uh, to the trades district and we'll get you the links and you actually uh, set up accounts and, and go in. That'll also be made public so the public can click on them and, and watch uh, real-time construction. A question for you, Jeff. Uh, how many parking spaces or is the final count on this one? Oh, you'd have to ask me that. Uh, Alex or Larry, you can jump in on this one as well. Uh, it, oh gosh, um, five five sixty two, I believe it's something like that. Uh, David, I can get you the actual number. We we basically ended up uh, just over what the goal goal was with by being able to accept the um, that sixth floor. So yeah, I was just looking per space, and we're about thirty three thousand. Yeah, that's about what we had, yeah, that was the original budget, so. Yeah, and if the parking garage lasts 50 years, then that's pretty cheap per, per space per year. Yeah, I mean, it. you know, the fact that we're, it's compact urban form at its best, you know, we're going up with it, it's not gonna, yeah, it's big, but you know, we're, the art's gonna make it look nice. Uh, we've got a lot of, of uh, energy reduction features built into it, plus all of the all-tran, you know, the bicycle uh, parking, the uh, bicycle garages, the repair uh, system. So we'll have the, the knockout for um, the buses. And, and um, so all in all, and again, the, the idea is that these will be um, the first two garages in Indiana that are Park Smart certified. So. And that's, Jeff, when, oh, sorry, go ahead, Don. Oh, you're fine. I was just trying to explain to whoever didn't know it. It's uh, it's the equivalent of um, lead, uh, huh? What's it called? Lead. Lead. Yeah, it's the same company that. Yeah. Yeah, it's just that they created one for garages because they it just didn't match up with the the lead criteria. So it's it's strictly uh, set towards uh, garages. The packet says uh, 550 parking spaces or something like that. Just so you know, that's what the packet had said. And then it said the solar panels, because I mean, we're going for the Park Smart, right? And so this level of coverage may be re revisited after design details have been determined to see if additional solar can be added. So at a minimum, we have 12,000 kilowatts. And, you know, I think that something this big going that high, we have a great opportunity to uh, make it as green as possible. I mean, it's a lot of cement, um, you know, that we're pouring down and that's a lot of CO2. So anything to help offset that would be really great. And Nick, one of the things, this is Alex Crowley, um, the, you know, as you know, solar can get capped by the utility company, so you can't overproduce. Right. So, you know, while you would love to just dump a huge array on top of the thing, if there's a lot of real estate, there, there are some natural caps that we have to deal with. And so what we've tried to do is maximize it by running, you know, metering down into uh, the retail spaces, obviously the shared, the shared uh, energy consumption by the garage itself, 
you just can't overproduce relative to what the what the demand is projected to be. And so we that's why I think we're looking for opportunities to grow that. But there's going to be there's going to be just a natural path that we're going to hit. I guess um, could there be a possibility in the future if this were to be somehow connected to other buildings for that are also trying to achieve similar goals, like lead goals, could those work together? Is that possible? So say there's space on the garage still, and then it gets, there's a, I'm not saying convention center, but maybe something else that is also achieving a lead. Can, can we add more to be able to funnel it over into there? Or is that possible? Well, I, what I would expect a more likely scenario is, uh, I mean, that is possible. It's just complicated to do that. It, it, it would have to be you know, city owned and under the same kind of bill ownership structure. But what I think might be more likely is as electric uh, car vehicle uh, um, numbers increase and we, right. we've built conduit to be able to increase charging uh, capacity. I actually okay. think there's probably a higher likelihood of us being able to increase the, and, and we're trying to build it in such a way to be able to do that, and to increase the array size to stay current with demand as the demand grows from electric vehicle charging. So I, that, that's probably the, the more likely scenario that, that we would want to tie increases to in the future. Okay. Any other questions in regards to resolution 20-39? It is a lot of money. I'd like to make a motion, this is David Walter, that we accept resolution 20-39. Sandwise second. Uh, Don Griffin in favor. So all those in favor is what I'm asking. Uh, Capus, yes. Sandwise, yes. David Walter, yes. Thank you all very much. Not opposed. Motion carries. Next item of business is resolution 20 40, approval of public art agreement with the Project One Studios for the Fourth Street Garage. Is there anyone that is present that wants or needs to speak briefly to this resolution? I can speak toward it. Uh, I've prepared a 50 minute presentation on the public art for the <laughs> Forestry Garage. No, th this is this is for the um, kind of the urban fabric design that we saw that was part of the planning process for the garage. Uh, you can see that that was attached to your, your uh, um, packet, just the concept of, of what the metal screens will look like. Uh, as you know, that we are going back and forth. Project One is kind of an up and coming Indiana based uh, public art company. They do a lot of public art around the Midwest, including in Indiana. Uh, so this is the contract for them to do on the current footprint, uh, the, the public art application. This is part of, you know, the city council's ordinance for 1% to be spent of all public works projects to be spent on the arts. Uh, in this case, we have budgeted $385,000, which is the contract amount for the public art. Uh, project one, uh, we're really excited. We think this will be a really neat addition to the garage and give it a lot of interest beyond just being a, a straight up uh, parking garage. So, and if I could add one thing that's a little different than than past garage public art that you've seen, uh, the idea here is um, we are not just affixing, you know, a large electric guitar to the side of a garage like we've had in the past or sort of one off pieces. Um, we're really trying to, this is, this is really much more integral to the overall design of the garage. So you, you can almost think of this as being interwoven with the architecture um, rather than just an appendage of public art um, in this case. So, so it's a little bit of a different uh, approach to how we've done things with, with garages in the past in Bloomington. Uh, um, let, let me ask the public if they've got anything that they'd like to uh, speak in regards to this resolution, just to get that out of the way. Not that it's not important, it's, it's very important to hear from the public. Okay, all right, uh, so let's go to questions from uh, commissioners. I have one. Uh, was, there, was there any local artist, um, or do we have like Sean Sterowitz and his folks, uh, do we have them, uh, uh, do we have their input on 
on on this? Do we have any local artists? And are are you following me, or did we just pay these guys just to to put this up? Uh, this was on? Sean's not Sean's not on the call, but what I can say is this was something sought out for the scale of what this is. This isn't the only public art that we're doing in relationship to these garages. So, okay, uh, trades district uh, we thought was a good opportunity to. Uh, open that up to all sorts of artists, uh, not, not just the locally like Bloomington based. I mean, these, Project One is based out of Indianapolis. So relatively, these are, this is a local, a local artist group that's doing this. Uh, one of the considerations here is experience working with this type of infrastructure, uh, doing something on, on this scale and doing something of interest that, that we thought would work. Uh, and the Project One had kind of been recommended to us because they had, I, I believe, worked on some other projects um, with, that our architect has also worked on. So that's one of the ways that Project One was selected for this as the best provider. But it isn't the only public art that will be going into the garages. I, I don't know about forestry. I'm sure Sean can elaborate. But I know that there are several things surrounding the Trades District Garage, for instance, that we are looking for. Uh, different kind of ideas to kind of mix it up. So it's, we're not just doing the same thing over and over again. One of the things I know Sean has carefully cultivated is a mix of artists to come into town and to give us kind of a, a variety of, of pieces throughout our public works project. So that was something that was very important to this as well. Okay. And this was the outcome. Uh, Don, I think you were asking whether or not we just picked one player just to go do it. Uh, th th there was a submission. There were multiple submissions. Oh no, um, no I, I, I miss. I, I don't. I don't. I, that's not what I meant. But um, okay. But no, no. I know we did. Um, uh, I just know that, just like when we're doing architecture, we usually have a uh, uh, for for some of our larger projects to keep our Bloomington flavor. We we uh, usually have them connected to a uh, a Bloomington architect. So. Um, I mean, Indianapolis, I guess, is close enough. I just, and it looks good. It looks really cool. I just was asking. So, but anyway. Well, I think Don brings up a really good point because I know bead is pretty, you know, <laughs> pretty uh, strongly, you know, opinionated and, and rightfully so to make sure that Bloomington artists are represented in what they view as these monolithic structure, structures. And so I think that um, is a very, very valid question. And I have to have a follow up. How many different RFPs were there for this art? How many responses to the RFP? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I have yeah. to go back and check. I, I, there were quite a few. Um, there, were, there, were, there were, and I don't know the exact number, but it was a pretty substantial uh, response. I mean, I hear what you're saying. I think, I think that you know what what we're trying to do, what's you know Sean's trying to do, what what ESD and 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 overall the administration is trying to do is balance between uh, supporting the local art scene, and there are a lot of opportunities that that we put out there to do that, and there continue to be. Um, and so there's you know we want to we want to put local artists to work on on public projects. Uh, Bloomington has a whole bunch of those out there, so I think that that's very important, very high priority. And at the same time, we also want to have, um, you know, opportunities from from outside of Bloomington uh, that I think uh, both, um, you know, mixes things up. And, um, you know, so we've had nationally recognized artists uh, in the in the, for example, the public private partnership that that uh, that was done with the graduate hotel. Uh, an important national rising artist. Uh, the, the, the murals that were done on the garage, on the side of the garage at Morton Street, uh, that, then, that's also a nationally recognized uh, national artist. So we're trying to balance the two. We're not trying to go one way or the other in, in every case. And I think, I think Sean's done a very good job uh, doing that uh, across the myriad of, of art projects that have come up in the last couple of years. My question, Alex, um, more mundane, uh, simply, are there any implications either uh, structural or safety wise uh, for uh, uh, approving this, this project uh, in terms of the design of the overall building? As you say, it's integrated. So does it have any structural implications or any, are there any additional safety concerns in terms of visibility uh, through the garage? 
So uh, structurally, there, there's been coordination between the architecture, ar architecture team, the construction team, and uh, project one. Because, because yes, it has to be affixed. And so we wanna make sure that those things that, are, that, are, that need to be done, this has been part of the design since the beginning. Um, so there's been pretty good visibility into what, what would be needed by when in order to mount this and have it be you know, uh, safe. So, um, so structurally, I think we're, we're very cover, we're covered. And, and from, a, from a visual safety and a visual uh, kind of airiness perspective, that was actually also one of the reasons why this design is picked. You'll, you'll notice it's got some, you know, it's, it's got some um, air throughput. Um, and so, so the design was, was recognized as being uh, also sort of visually um, more loose um, than, than like, you know, a big wall of something, for example, that would block out the light. Uh, one of the things about ParkSmart is that it does, um, among other things, credit natural light. Um, and so, so it was important for us to balance the, you know, the natural light component with, with something that would be fairly prominent visually on the outside. Uh, to just to follow up real quick, the uh, the difference between the dark and the light concrete walls that are shown on their scheme, one that uh, they prefer, and I guess I do too. Uh, what's that decision going to rest upon? The concrete, it was concrete in the, walls. It, it was in the alternates for the uh, garage, and we accepted that to paint it. Accepted which? The painted the preferred. The, the darker. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I believe it blends better with the uh, artwork. Okay. Any other questions uh, with resolution, folks? The public art agreement, twenty dash forty. None. Okay. We have a motion. I'll move approval of uh, 20 40. Nick Cap is second. All those in favor, aye, Don Griffin, approve. Nick Cap is yes. Eric Sandwise, yeah. David Walter, yes. Uh, motion is approved. There, I don't, there's no, uh, um, I'm sorry. But yes, motion is approved. Um, next item of business is resolution 20-41, approval of payment of le legal fees for the 4th Street parking garage. Who wants to speak in regards to this? Uh, I'll speak briefly in regards to this. So this was part of the attempt to acquire uh, additional property to, to make the footprint of the garage larger, uh, which would have brought down the height of the garage. As you're aware, uh, we are unsuccessful. We continue negotiations throughout that process and we're unsuccessful in the negotiations. Uh, under Indiana code, um, we are responsible for legal fees if we are unsuccessful in the courts. Um, and we decided that because of what we wanted to get the most out of our garage and, and made kind of a a risk analysis calculation of the potential cost of taking this to an appeal, which we, we thought we would have likely uh, been successful on, but it would have cost us time and significant more expenses in uh, construction costs just from the delay and the uncertainty of obtaining the land. So we decided to let this lie at the trial court. Uh, we have settled an amount uh, with an agreement of the landowner's attorneys, uh, that amount of money is $62,250. Um, and that would be paid out of the project budget, uh, which could be a combination of the, the bonds or the consolidated TIF. Uh, typically, it, it'll probably be the bonds, but uh, there, there is an option there for Jeff, depending on how the money works out. Uh, the reason why the RDC uh, would be paying this amount is because this is an RDC funded project and, and these are the types of legal costs that are anticipated under Indiana code under the RDC's uh, purview. So if you have any questions, I'm, I am happy to answer them. Do we have any questions from the public in regards to resolution 20-41? We don't, okay. So uh, 
Um, commissioners, let's. If you have any questions, let's uh, let's ask them. Yeah. My question is, were were we the ones that decided to take this to court? Was the RDC the the deciding factor in that? This is the, the city of Bloomington uh, formally took it to court because of the procedures under the law uh, for obtaining property using condemnation. I mean, to, to be clear, uh, the process of condemnation really is typically to determine fair market value of the property. Uh, we, we had engaged in negotiations with the landowner and were unable to come to a reasonable number that was within, honestly, a certain markup of the um, appraisals that the RDC had commissioned. And so we thought that it, the best course of action was for the city to engage in the condemnation proceeding to get to a fair market value. Uh, the trial court, because as you know, um, we, have, we have an ordinance that requires any structure within the downtown overlay to have uh, dedicated non-parking, non-residential space uh, that we were going to open up as potential retail space or a commercial space. Generally, the court found that that uh, negated the public purpose of the public park parking garage. We obviously disagreed with that, uh, but that was the city of Bloomington. I'm sorry, that's a long-winded way of, of getting to your answer. It was the city of Bloomington, but it would have ultimately been uh, part of the RDC project, RDC funded project to, to, to rebuild the 4th Street garage. So when I see, whereas under Indiana Code 36, 7, 14, 25.1 and 14-39, that's where you're establishing the stat statutory code that we would be on the hook for that kind of expense. It's an acquisition expense, that's correct. Yeah, so the, this would have been the same outcome, for instance, if uh, the city had successfully negotiated a reasonable price to purchase the property, right. uh, that, that would have come under those same code provisions as an acquisition expense and, and the, the, uh, any attorney's fees that may have been opportunity to that as well. Uh, and, and, that's because, and that's because the initial uh, design included where one uh, was that 222 South Walnut or whatever it is. Yeah, I, one, of the, one of the concerns that we had gotten uh, the RDC in, in its initial approval of the garage and also in consultation with the common council was that there was a concern about height in the downtown and that a wider footprint uh, was found to be more favorable than a taller footprint. Obviously, we haven't been able to do that. We've been able to, to luckily have the same amount of spaces on the taller footprint, but there, there are additional costs with that. So that's why the, the extra land was, was, was also sought. Um, there was also opportunity you know, for future expansion. There is a, there is a um, if we ever come back to you know, developing the convention center, uh, in, the, in and around that area, there was, a, there was an easier path to certain types of development. It's not off the table, it's still possible. Uh, we just, it just, uh, this is the best for the community right now. Yeah, I just have a problem, pay, you know, I just actually have a problem with the RDC paying the legal fees, but I understand, I understand the legal argument, I understand the factual argument, I just have a problem with us paying it because I think that Ultimately, while we are part of hand, which is part of the city, it just seems like that decision was outside of our our control, and so now we're having to pay for that. And that's that's where I'm coming from. I under, but I totally understand where you came from. Sorry. I, I would say the only thing about that, uh, Nick, and sure, certainly you're, this is this is what this is for. This type of discussion is that uh, the the original design on the larger footprint was approved by the RDC. Right. Yeah. 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 I, I understand. Yeah. Okay. I agree with uh, you, Larry, that this is a, this is an appropriate discussion, and particularly as we wrap up uh, this this portion of the uh, the project, and it's a it's a big wrap. Um, I think it's good to put on the public record again that uh, this was uh, these kinds of ground floor uses were ones that were deemed to be in the public interest and, uh, and were deemed so by the elected officials and that uh, we as a commission uh, considered them to be such as well. So while the uh, court may have uh, seen 
otherwise, I think it's important to reiterate that we really uh, planned this uh, this garage and its uh, initially um, larger uh, footprint with the idea of benefiting uh, the public in the end. And I think that was still the right um, decision to have made. Yeah, I'm going to concur on that um, in the sense that we were kind of stuck. We needed 500 plus parking spaces, yet we were told that we could only go a certain height. So we were limited by the height. Um, so this was, this was the easiest and the it should have been the easiest way to go. It really should. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I understand. So obviously it's very unique uh, because now I'm hearing your guys, you know, the RDC side, cause I was on the plan commission, right. During all of this. So I have that, that side and you have your, and this, and now I'm on this side and I'm, I'm hearing both. And I think that, you know, ultimately the, the conversation that we're having right now is really healthy for this organization going forward because I think there were assumptions made in the development of this. And I think that um, that has ultimately cost taxpayers $62,250. You know, so, you know, the court system is the court system that's outside of our hands. But I think that, you know, when we go through big projects like this, because there will be other huge projects coming our way that, we make sure that we're run, not running off of assumptions of what certain co other commissions or bodies might do. Um, and just, that's just, a, that's just my two cents. Like, once again, I understand the legal arguments here and I understand everything that led to this point. I'm just expressing some of my uh, viewpoints on this. So I appreciate and, that. And, and Nick, we need to, we need to also explain that the plant that, that, other folks were involved in making this, these decisions too. I mean, be, even- Oh, 100%, 100%. You know? I'm not saying the RDC is yeah. the sole person. No, 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 I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying there's a lot of people involved with something this big, yeah. by all means. But I, I appreciate that. Getting the bonds approved, that was, that was quite a- <laughs> that was quite an undertaking too, man. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Uh, so, yeah. Um, but anyway, smoother, smoother. Uh, I, I think this is this is going to be good for everyone. Uh, so, what do you guys think? Uh, this is David Walter. Um, yeah, I've been following this all along, and I agree. We would have had a better project if we could have acquired that project or that uh, additional site, but uh, it is what it is. And uh, with that, I'd like to make a motion we accept resolution 20-41. Second. Second. Uh, Don Griffin in favor. Um, Kappas. Uh, yes. Walter, yes. Um, all right, motion passes. Um, let's go to the next one. Resolution 20-42, approval of a funding for the due diligence inspection of the Waldron Art Center. My God, I can't, I, I'm getting old guys can't read with the glasses on. I can't see you with them off. Just, ah. Yeah, uh, resolution 20-42, approval of funding for due diligence inspections of the Waldron Art Center. Who uh, who among us would love to speak on this? Larry, you want me to start? Sure, go ahead. So um, as you may know, um, Ivy Tech, having had ownership of the, of the Waldron for many years, um, has decided to um, exit the building and has, uh, as part of that agreement, um, um, basically uh, wants to transfer it back to the city. That, that's part of the original agreement that the city would be the first potential recipient of the building should this situation occur. This came pretty quickly for us, uh, unexpectedly. Um, and so 
what we uh, intend to do is to do two types of due diligence on the building uh, in, in very short order. Um, one is a physical due diligence, which is really looking at the roofing, at the uh, mechanicals, uh, tuck pointing, and windows, all of which, you know, is sort of part of the standard physical due diligence you want to do. In this particular case, um, with particular emphasis on windows and tuck pointing and HVAC, because those three have been highlighted to us as potential areas of concern. The roof is relatively new, but we want to just double check it anyway. So there's a the physical due diligence, and then there's the um, there's more of the economic due diligence, if you will, and the programming due diligence. And that that's looking at, you know, a, a PL or equivalent for the building over the past 12 or 24 months. What are the revenues? What are the expenses? Just trying to get an understanding of what are we dealing with relative to ongoing operations of, of the building. So we are um, gathering together um, contractors to be able to do the physical thing and a uh, physical due diligence portion of it. And then we're also working directly with Ivy Tech to get information on more of the operational uh, due diligence. So that's the broader context, Larry. I don't know if you want to jump in and talk about this particular one. Sure. So the, these this focuses on the physical due diligence, as, as Alex mentioned. So specifically the mechanical systems and the roofing. Uh, in particular, this is this is going to be this is a major asset toward downtown. It's very visible. It's something that we want to make sure we maintain. And as I'm sure um, Jeff would love to attest to, it's something we want to make sure that we're budgeting properly for to keep it in working order for the arts community and whatever. Uh, whatever direction ultimately uh, the community decides is best for the programming uh, aspect of it that Alex just talked about. So these are pretty straightforward. These are this is something that we did. Uh, for instance, for the Bunger and Robertson building over our college as well. This, this is the type of due diligence we did before closing. And so while there is um, a conveyance agreement where it allows the this property to be conveyed back to the city, this is something we want to do before we formally close on it, just so that we know and that we know for the future to be able to budget and make sure that it's uh, in good keep. Okay. Any questions from the public in regards to resolution 20-42? Okay, now we can talk. Um, man, okay, is this the first time the public's hearing about this being open? It, it isn't. Uh, this this was released in a press release that the Ivy Tech intended to convey this back to the city of Bloomington. Okay. And I should say, when they say convey it back to the city of Bloomington, uh, that is in exchange for a $1 cost, um, just as a, a nominal, uh, um, conveyance uh, as opposed to fair market value or something else where there would be a significant purchase price. Well, they've done a good job. David, I was on the, the redevelopment commission way, way back then when you, when, when uh, we started this uh, relationship with them, I think. Do you remember? Yeah, that building's uh, been renovated, got, got an elevator in there, ADA uh, compliant. Uh, the few times I've been in there for activities, it's always been comfortable in terms of heating and air conditioning. Uh, it's a good idea to have that roof looked at. Uh, as it turns out, I know the director of operations, Ben Brown, uh, in a former life, he worked for another company that did roofing work. So I know some of his background and uh, it'd be good to get eyes on that because that's where you're biggest problems start. Mm -hmm. And of course, the local architects, they're well qualified to look this building over in detail and tell us if there's problems with it. So I don't have a problem with this. It's always good to get some idea of what we're getting and what we're going to have to anticipate in immediate as well as future uh, repair work. That's all I have to say. Any other questions or comments from any commissioners? No, yeah, that was good. I, 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 I guess I have a question for David then. Um, when I was looking through this, I see wall, you know, they're looking at the walls, elevators, everything like that. Are they also going to be looking at the architects? Are they going to be uh, looking at the uh, 
like the limestone facade too for deterioration is that part of that as well uh yeah they should do a survey of the exterior just you know it may be from the ground level with uh, binoculars and take uh, digital photographs uh building this old i just don't remember if it got uh repointed uh, in its lifetime between the John Walter and Arts Center and Ivy Tech taking it over. Uh, but then that's usually the biggest problems is water infiltration either between the joints and the stones or perimeter around windows and doors or through the roof. So yeah, um, yeah. it shouldn't Doesn't take mean... too long to do a survey and then come up with uh, cost estimates for any necessary repairs awesome to that point a, that. a couple of things one is we, we do know I, I ivy tech to their credit ha, have really done a, a nice job with the building uh, while they've had it they also have been very aware of of, of problems uh, many of which they've been able to fix some which they intended to get to and haven't uh they did alert us that particularly in the back side of the building um some of the exterior was worth taking us a, a, a close look at so we're aware of that and we'll make sure that that gets done um, on the on the front facades, actually, um, they were they were uh, due for a BUEA facade grant, and so hmm. so that some of that work might be able to be offset um, that way. But but the backside would not be eligible for that, and that's that's where we're going to take a very close look. Okay. Yeah, I would just add that it's a deep cut in the packet. But if you look at page one hundred one, uh, part of the scope of services for Tabor Bruce uh, is that exterior assessment uh, and doing a full exterior assessment on all the walls and the windows and the doors. Yeah, and, and that, and that's where I saw that. I yeah. saw that there, Larry. I was just clarifying what walls meant. I appreciate that. At what point, if I can ask, at what point um, are we going to begin the, the second of the two studies that Alex uh, outlined? What's the anticipated timeline for that larger uh, program study? So that's not a that's not that won't be a cost uh, to to the RDC because that's going to be done uh, in house. But we've already kicked that off with specific requests to Ivy Tech for documentation, um, and so so that's already underway. Um, you know we we are we recognize two things: uh, one that the creative season, which is really a July one to June thirtieth typical fiscal year, has begun. Uh, so we're, you know, we're acutely aware of the, of the timing of people's need to try to predict what their creative seasons will be, whether that's uh, theater companies that use the, you know, the, either of the two theater bays or the, um, you know, the artists that use the gallery. So, um, so we, we're trying to do this as quickly as possible. Um, we are also aware and, and um, you know, that, that, that many of the affected uh, creative businesses that would be using it, uh, the theater companies, et cetera, um, you know, given the circumstances of the pandemic, um, have, uh, I think in all, almost all cases, um, canceled their fall seasons. So, so there's, there's this kind of dual reality that we're looking at right now. What we want to try to do is to get that done as quickly as possible, as thoroughly as possible, um, and then be able to communicate out to the public uh, what it is in the, you know, what the short-term operating um, availability will be. And, you know, short-term is 12 to 18 to 24 months. And then, you know, a, a broader conversation can get underway about what should happen over the long-term to the Waldron and how does it fit into the uh, space ecosystem in Bloomington. And it's not a, a, a question that's too pertinent to us, but just out of curiosity, where in the city bureaucracy, where will the building reside or, or the activities for the building? Who will be uh, handling it? Larry's going to move in, so he'll live there. And uh, just my permanent home now. I, I hope not. <laughs> no. Phantom of the Opera. That's right. We're, we're probably, I mean, that's a, that's a good question. That's part of the due diligence we're going to have to do to try to understand what kind of management um, staffing is is required to run a building like that. In the very, very near term, it'll sit within um, economic sustainable development. We may, in fact, deploy one or several staff members if needed to, to go be housed there if that's what it takes. That's actually what happened 
back when uh, it was initially put into into sort of review before Ivy Tech took took it over. Uh, the person uh, Jackie Bauer, who was Sean Starwitz's predecessor, upped and, and and plunked herself in that building for a while just to kind of like keep it going. So we're ready for that if we need to, but we really want it before we make any rash decisions. We want to understand what it's going to take. All right. Any other questions? All right. Can we? Uh... Did I ask the public about this yet? I don't think I did, did I? Any questions from the public in regards to resolution 20 42? None. Okay. Um, can we have a motion? This is David Walter. I'd like to make a motion to accept resolution 20 42. San Weiss, I second it. Don Griffin, I'm in favor of. Capus, yes. Sandweiss, aye. David Walter, yes. Okay, motion carries. Um, uh, everyone's in favor, so motion carries. And uh, now we do we have any other business or general discussion? Uh, just just one thing. Uh, Commissioner Sandweiss asked about the minutes for the presentation on 1730 South Walnut. And I just wanted to mention that that was, that we actually did approve those last time in the previous meeting. So that was included with their uh, PDF. Um, and certainly I'm happy to take any questions to the architect if there were follow-up questions on that or a follow-up discussion that you all wanted to have. But I just want to point out that those were part of the, the previous uh, meeting and previous meeting approved minutes. And also it's archived on CATS as well for any, of, any member of the yeah. public who would like to view that conversation since it was very valuable. Thanks for the clarification and apologies for forgetting it. I uh, wanna sell it, send out uh, well wishes to uh, Doris Sims, who is having knee replacement surgery on Wednesday. Oh, so wow. She is uh, in full prep mode right now. So she and I have been, been playing uh, dueling surgery. So I, I've, I've told, as I've told her, she's only getting one. I've, I'm going to have uh, three yet this year. So, but good luck to Doris. And you know, she's watching. I mean, well, no, it's not live anymore. I'm in, never mind. All right. Are we done? Are we done guys? Any other questions? All right. Uh, uh, let's, uh, meeting is adjourned. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Take care.